Good afternoon. I'm Glenn Lowry, director of the Museum of Modern Art, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this Symposium on Broken Nature, a major exhibition and research project that will open at the Triennale in Milan on March 1st, 2019, and that we are so proud and happy to be part of. As I think many of you know, perhaps all of you know, Broken Nature is about the restorative design at all scales, from urban planning to the molecular, and how we can repair our connection to nature and even more importantly, to each other. No small feat, but essential. Ever since this museum's founding in 1929, we have tried to be a place for important conversations about art, culture, and humanity. At this time of many crises, and intense denial. The museum is again a place where we hope veils can be lifted and difficult arguments deeply and constructively argued. A place where ideas are allowed to grow and move forward into the world. Indeed, curators here at the Museum of Modern Art are always researching and tackling difficult topics from social injustice based on race gender or physical ability, to the concept of identity in a post-colonial world, just to name a few areas of interest. When it comes to a concern about the environment, the Museum of Modern Art and its sister institution, MoMA PS1, we have been working on this for years, as have many others. And I hope that some of our projects are beacons of how to approach this issue. Among other major initiatives here, Rising Currents of 2010 was an exhibition that started with a desire to elicit proposals for the fragile future of New York's waterfront by bringing together a core group of architects, engineers, urban planners, and thinkers to imagine a future. And Expo One at MoMA PS1 in 2013, where we enlisted artists to explore environmental challenges in the context of the economic and socio-political instability of the early 21st century, an instability that has only grown more fragile and more dire in the intervening years. For all of these ideas to have real impact, they need to move from academic discussion into the world at large. They need to touch cultures and lives and generate their own exchanges. When the Triennale asked Paolo Antonelli here at the museum to think of a concept for the 22nd edition, Paola and I saw the opportunity to develop and expand the conversation to absorb and metabolize new ideas in order to continue the work here and there. And I just want to say for a moment, Paola, it is always a thrill to work on a project with you. I think all of you know that Paola has produced some of the best exhibitions here. Paola has produced some of the best exhibitions here, but more importantly, over the years has developed a methodology of which this symposium is an integral part, not to seek answers, but to try to elicit questions by bringing colleagues together to think and share their ideas and to see an exhibition as a kind of unfolding aspect of this ongoing thinking. So Paola, as always, a tip of the hat to you. So the idea for Broken Nature was born here five years ago, and since then it has grown substantially. The Triennale is a precious and particular opportunity to test a new step in the curatorial research process, as well as a precious collaboration between kindred spirits on a very urgent matter. I think it's fair to say that great institutions worry alike, and they share their resources in order to explore critical ideas and suggest innovative answers. All of us at the museum are thrilled to be working with the Triennale 
and I am delighted that you are all here this afternoon on this important occasion to think together and to share your knowledge. I can't imagine a better way of engaging this topic, broken nature, than to gather here on the eve of a new year, months before the triennial, to think through how we can move an agenda forward. And so Stefano Boeri is here from the Triennale, the president, and it's my pleasure to welcome you and to thank you for allowing us to partner with you. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks all of you. I think it's a really honor for me to film this amazing partnership with Museum of Modern Art. And uh, I'd love simply before the floor to Paola, just talk a little bit about the Tornale of Milano. Uh, Tornale is uh, it's part of the history of uh, Italian of European culture. Uh, and uh, it's if you want, uh, at the same time, three things together. Uh, it's a building. The building was realized in 1933 in Milano by Giovanni Muzio. And uh, I think it's this one of the most representative, better example of uh, architecture during the fascist period. And what makes it absolutely unique is a uh, uh, capacity to be at the same time uh, uh, monumental but uh, extremely flexible side. So it's a building that has a, a theater, it has a ballroom, it has a, on a saloon, it has more than 7,000 square meter for exhibition and many other places. It's a really polyvalent, polyvalent and polycentric space. But uh, Tenale, as you said, is also a theater was very important in the history of European avant-garde theater. So, uh, in that, that period, he was hosting a, a theater director like Cantor, leading theater, Grotowski, and it's still playing a major role in the cultural theater of nowadays. And uh, uh, it's hosting a, a design museum, a permanent collection of Italian design furniture. And we are very proud to announce that uh, in uh, April, at the beginning of the design week, we will open the first mission of the permanent collision of the Italian uh, design view. Uh, but for sure, what makes, uh, what has made Cernale uh, famous all over the world was the series of international exposition, but starting from 1921, uh, were making the Palazzo dell'Arte in Milano, the epicenter of a triennial exhibition where uh, different series of concepts, advanced concepts, were uh, used together, architects, designers, thinkers from all over the world. So in a certain way, I think that Triennale is all this together. It's a public institution founded in 1921, and uh, it's a building who was, from the beginning, able to bridge a gap between decorative arts, applied arts, performative arts, and visual arts. You see here, for instance, uh, Lucio Fontana in 1950, or De Chirico, or people like Capogrossi. Uh, and at the same time, it's uh, a triennial uh, series of international expo. Uh, well, I seriously think, you see here at the opening of the first 1933 Expo in uh, Milano, in uh, Palazzo Muzio, and all the installations that were projected in the park nearby the Triennale. Uh, I think that what Paolo Antonelli, together with MoMA, is doing and will do, is uh, in a certain way to, for the first time, to make these three souls working together. So I think the Broken Nature exhibition, this is the Chirico, will, for the first time, help us to understand how this amazing building could uh, at the same time uh, uh, develop its aim as a public institution to bridge the gap between art fields, 
but also to explore new fields that we are doing with the Broken Nature Expo. So thank you so much, and I give the floor to Paola.